Hello everybody, welcome to my tutorial. This tutorial is combining our knowledge about Android devices and Arduino because we are going to send the command from our smartphone using serial communication to our Android uh, to our Arduino device. In that case we can control another device. In this in this example it is a servo motor we send command uh, to our Arduino and Arduino create a PWM commands for our DC motor or servo motor or brushless motor or any other device. This is a fun project without writing a single line of C code. I hope you like it and please uh, at the end leave me your comments and feedbacks. Let's get started. Okay, first step is to get the prerequisite files that you need for this project. I already assume that you have watched my last tutorials about uh, setting up an Android device to communicate with Simulink. So I'm not going to talk about that. If you don't have Simulink support packages for Android, go back and find that video on the Simulink support package for Android. For Arduino, simply search Arduino in Adam Explorer and you will find the page and uh, the short description. Simply click on install and it will be installed and ready to use. Before using it, I usually prefer to always do the setup wizard here. When I come to manage add-ons, click on the little gearbox. In this case, I'm, I will be sure that the connections and everything is okay, so there's nothing wrong with my code. It's give me better concentration of my code. So always do the wizard at the first of your work. Right now I'm using Arduino Mega 2516, simply click and everything is ready, yes I want to verify and I will click on test the connection. You see it may take a little while but it's working and it's, it means that right now I'm going to continue with coding and simulating. These are the simulation uh, examples of Arduino if you are new to this simulating support package just uh, spend the time a little to find out what are the examples. I'm going to continue uh, combine these two with serial communication and servo control somehow here. Okay. The, first, the next step is to download the library that I have created in Simulink uh, add -on, MATLAB Addon Explorer. Simply search Arduino Android phone serial or Arduino smartphone serial. You will come to this page, click on install and it will be added to your MATLAB uh, workspace and click open folder. And you will face with this error, open this folder, you have two simulation simulating file, one for Android and one for Arduino. Let's start with Android so we know what is happening here. Okay, very simple. Uh, if you have watched the last tutorial, it's very simple. Uh, for the initializing the sample time, go to Model Explorer properties and callbacks in it functions and set the TS100 Hz, it means 0 0.01. Then we have four sliders that simulates four commands for different four motors. Each one between 0 to 255, which is the PWM range of uint8 in Arduino. And we, com we convert it just to make sure to uint A for clarify. We have a terminator at the, at the end of the bucket and we have a header. These two blocks are the same. The first one is the data character array and the associated ASCII codes is described in the below code. You can use both of them. The above one, the first one gives you debugging control in your application. And then we use a max to max all these values together and we show the packets to the user just for debugging. And as you can see, you can count how many data we have. If you count, you see we have 9 bytes, 4 data bytes for the delta alpha tango alpha for the header, a terminator, 5 and 4 motors means 9. And then we simply send it with Android serial transmit. But to make sure, just first come to your hardware setting. I already did all the uh, configuration for you, but you don't need to worry. But in case there's a problem, come here, check that the Android device is selected and come to the serial properties. I have selected 115, 200 bit per second because I want the fastest communication possible. I'm trying to have 100 Hertz. If you, it's not the case for your project, you can reduce the baud rates. 
but make sure the phone and the Android are on the same baud rate and now you have two options you can use the monitor and tune options or build and deploy option right now I have connected my phone to computer I can either click on build and deploy and it will be built and installed on my phone I will show you how it looks like on Android and if you face with this error this is routine this this error because in your in the address of accessing the files you have some spaces and some special characters to solve it uh, simply come to your MATLAB uh, workspace and change it to a very routine web uh, routine address for example C and a new folder for this project and then it should be okay and it is okay right now I will show you how it looks in the map as you can see after the build process completed a new application has appeared on my screen when I open it this is the code that we generated this is the header data four slider for four different motors and this is the packet that is being sent 68 65 84 65 for the header and after that four individual zeros and then 10 for the terminator if i change the motor 3 you can see that the motor 3 value is being ch different changing but it's not doing anything because we haven't done anything in the arduino part yet Okay, this is how your board should look like. Very simple. For demonstration, I only used one servo, so you can just to see if it works or not. Very simple. You have three pins from the servo, the signal, and the ground and VCC. Outputs VCC to five volts, grounds to ground, and the signal for this one runs to pin nine. And uh, you need two, as you can see here. It's hard to show you. This is an OTG connector that connects USB Type C to USB female. Then I connected an FDDI board, a TTL, USB to the TTL converter to this one with a male USB connector. Um, you can see the pinouts here. I'm using five volts for running the boards. TX, RX, and ground. But be careful. Right now in this project, I'm using the power from the phone to run the servo. It's not a good job. It's very dangerous. First of all, when you're using your phone power, be careful with connection. Don't mess up with the connection. Don't mix the ground and VCC together because you are using your phone right now and <laughs> Your phone is vulnerable, and you can you may damage your battery or phone. And <laughs> so, okay. By the way, be careful with that. But with this micro servo, this use very small amount of energy, so it's very low power. So it doesn't make uh, damage my phone if I use the power from uh, the servo power from my phone. But uh, be careful not to use a more powerful servo and. If you uh, hold the servo like this when it's trying to rotate, you hold it, it consumes more power. So don't do that when you're using your phone as a power source. In a real project, you should use the power from another power supply board. Okay, let's go to work. Okay, after that, it's time to see how, how the code for, Android, uh, for Arduino looks like. Uh, it's just opposite of what we have in the last one in the hardware properties make sure that the arduino mega 2516 or the arduino board that you are using is selected then you go to target settings and make sure that every uh, property is okay i've selected the com board manually to come nine because sometimes it automatically doesn't work and the most important one that is the serial properties. I'm using serial one and serial zero. Serial one is for getting the data from Android and serial zero is for debugging only. And I'm set this to the uh, same value that I have been selected before. These display ports only work for debugging and when you are, we are using monitor and tune option and they, do, they don't do anything when you build and deploy the code to your Arduino. This is the most important part as we can see there's a MATLAB function that inputs the data that we get from the serial and called in and also input the size which is 9 and outputs four different values for four motors and also a 
پولی هم ولی کار ولی الان می گویم تو چک ایف ده هدر هم ترمینیتر از اوکی سو ام گویم تو یوزینگ ایف بلاک ای ویل چک ایچ کاریکتر ایف ده ایل بی اوکی I will assign the value to the motor one and put the value value to true else I will put it to false then these values are fed into this subsystem and this subsystem is an enabled subsystem it means that I can feed a boolean to it as enabled so if the enable item is false this subsystem won't work at all and I fed the valid boolean to that In here you have two options you can use the servo library for this example and in this function I have converted the value from 0 to 255 to a value between 0 and 180 and for just to make sure that the server won't stuck in place I will select it 20 to 160 and I fed it to the four different pins for server another option is you use raw PWM with that you can send commands to ESCs as well because it's a little different with how server and ESC is handled with PWM just the same you can uncomment uh, below item and comment the server items and right now you are sending a value 0 to 255 as a PWM you can connect it to an LED you can connect it to electronic speed controls for brushless or brush DC motors or anything else but I'm going to continue with servo for this demonstration and there is an LED GPIO LED output digital output and I'm connected to the valid uh, valid boolean so when the data is valid the LED on board the Arduino is on and when the LED is off it means we don't have um, valid data and I'm going to click on monitor and tune and let it compile build and run okay now we are in the monitor and tune condition it means that we need simulink in parallel with our project to have it so we don't have a standalone application on our own and on our Arduino board. After I connect Arduino to my phone using OTG, I will face with a permission granted means uh, you allow the application to connect to USB or I say OK. And only for my own application, not others. And then I'm going to open our own application. As you can see, it is connected right now, and you see here that it's working and the data is being updated. But there's a problem here, as you can see, sometimes the data is being mishandled because the Simulink and Arduino cannot work at 100 Hz when they are working parallel. So that's why, as you can see, we had the uh, LED number 13 for the validity, and sometimes it blinks, it means sometimes it doesn't have valid data. But it's working because we have a header and we control the invalid data. Right now you see, uh, for example, I can change the motor angle from a slider and it's rotating. And as you can see, I'm changing here and also the value here is changing. And that's it. After the, everything is be okay, you will see that it's working. We get data from the... Arduino, from Arduino but you, you see we have a lot of lost packets and data is are not okay in many seconds it's because we are using Simulink and Arduino in parallel together then they cannot handle 100 Hz I will put the sample rates down to 5000 of a second to make sure that uh, Simulink is looking Arduino is looking for the packet but still, uh, when you are using the build and deploy option, it, you won't face with that error. You don't need to have five thousands of a second for sample rate. But it's better to have it. It means that Arduino will look for the data at a faster rate, and it won't mix up the data and won't have lost packets. Okay, right now the code is deployed to our Arduino device independent of the simulink, so we don't have any connection with laptop anymore. And this is look like a real project because we don't have Simulink in the, real, uh, in the real project. We only have the hardware. And everything is being supplied by the phone. I mean, the phone is supplying the power and also processing data and fit the commands to the Arduino. Arduino is only receiving the code and creating the PWM signals that we need. But uh, right now, be careful, as I told you before, right now you are using your battery and your phone as a power source so make sure you are not using something dangerous <laughs>
to your battery okay just like the last example I'm going to allow the my allow my application to com communicate using USB and everything is working now I'm going to change the command and and if it, and it is working as you can see the LED number 13 that was the valid data indicator is almost solid on it's always on it means we don't have any lost packets here just like the last one in the last simulation that we had Simulink and Android running together we had a lot of lost packets and it was blinking all the time but right now it's solid now and in the real you can see I'm trying to rotate the focus I'm changing the command and the servo is following and it's exactly following at the same time it's just a demonstration you can you can, instead of this servo you can send command to four different ESCs to command brushless motors or any other things any other commands you can have more than four commands as well this is only a demonstration the code that is being generated by Simonic you can copy and paste this code to your Arduino IDE or you can just browse this code to have an idea of how Arduino and MATLAB are working together okay that's it and just to let you sum it up and combine everything that we did in this very quick tutorial uh, in this tutorial we just used uh, our before uh, previous knowledge about how to communicate with Android application and knowledge about how to communicate with Android uh, Arduino device and without writing a single line of C code we generated thousands of lines of C code and deployed it to our devices we deployed a software to our, our Android device that it gives us the control UI to control the servo or any other PWM device we send the command at a very high rate to our Arduino with its serial and OTG connection and we let our servo rotate and as I told you you have two options when you are debugging and you are just checking if the data is correct you use the monitor and tune mode in your MATLAB in that case it will be much more slower because in your serial the data should be sent and received and the debugging data should be sent and received as well you may not get 100 hertz in that case you can reduce the data rate to 0.1 to or 10 hertz and you can increase the sample rate of the arduino it means the time the rate of the time that arduino is looking for data to less than one hundredth of a second for example in this case five thousand five milliseconds I put it to make sure that the Arduino is not losing any packets and when you did everything you uh, do the second job which is build and deploy it means in that case you don't need Simulink anymore and your code will be run independent and you can uh, install it on a real project it can be a drone it can be a vehicle it can be a smart boat or a smart vehicle or anything else uh, and let me know if you created something intuitive something very uh, new with the things that you learned from this video and let me know if i did anything wrong because I, I am not advanced user with these things, I am just working with these uh, new methods and I am sharing my experience with you. So if you know anything more please let me know in the comment section and if you have any ideas for the next tutorials please let me know as well. And at the end please like, subscribe and share if you want to know about the next tutorials and you don't want to miss the next tutorials about these things. Thank you, happy coding, goodbye.